Welcome to Hope Today. We're so glad you joined us. You know, I love it that the scriptures promise us a future and a hope, and we are believing that you have a future and a hope, and we're believing this program is part of that. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Sydney Goldman. It is such a joy for us to help brighten your day, and we love because it brings such joy into our lives too, right, Tom? It surely <laughs> does, and welcome. We're just so grateful to have this time in the presence of Almighty God where we can encourage one another. Well, that is so true, Tom. And, uh, you know, I, I love that we have this opportunity just to encourage one another on a, on a, on a Tuesday, right? Uh, you know, right. it's just, you know, it works on a Tuesday. Christianity, we, we, we have, the, you know, we, a lot of times Sunday, that's the day we build up to. But you know what? Every day Christ is there. He's given us a future and a hope. Yeah, every day we love the opportunity just to get into the presence of God, just to talk to Him, just to like get into His presence. That's something, Tom and Tom, that I have just been really, really diving into is having those moments when I'm like, you know what, let me just sit before you, Jesus. Mm. What do you have to say to me today, right? And when it's like we fill ourselves up with Jesus, He gives us this hope, He gives us this encouragement like never before. Be still and know that I am God. Yeah. And, and God has blessed that for our family, that it goes beyond that. It means acknowledge God. May we acknowledge who God is this day. Amen. Well, we have a scripture that we, we want to share with you today. And uh, we, okay, there we have it. All right. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Even so, you've done well to share with me in my present difficulty. And of course, that's Apostle Paul from Philippians chapter four. I, uh, I guys, I have tried to live up to the scripture so mm. many times where I, I say, I can live in every situation. And then I get into a situation and it's like, I don't know, Lord. I don't know if this is one that I'm going to get through. Well, there are really two lessons in this scripture as, as Paul was writing to the church. The first is that we are content in the Lord, that we are satisfied, that, that God will give us more than, than what we need for that day. And so we need to be content in the Lord and for our blessings at any given time. And that's what he was saying. Also, that we understand we need to trust in the Lord for our strength that we sometimes double down. We're in that difficult situation and we try to double down on that situation. No, but those who trust in the Lord for their strength, we will find our strength renewed. God will take us through that situation. You know, that is such a true thing that we have to stand on even in this season with everything that's being shaken, everything that's being happened. Mm. We need to find our contentment. We need to find our peace in right. Christ and Christ alone. And there's so many things that are happening right now in our world. I mean, I feel like, you know, it's just like you're seeing on the news, like different things are happening. You know, in Baltimore, there was an explosion. There was a shooting that happened outside the White House. There's all these things that are going on. But you know, we hold on to Christ and Christ alone. And we want to talk to you about a moment for a moment, a historic change that's happening in Lebanon on Monday, evening, the country's government stepped down. Now, Lebanon's Prime Minister Hassan Diab and his cabinet resigned. Now, this, of course, comes after the massive explosion that killed more than 160 people, injured thousands of others, and sparked days of protest. Now, the blast has been described as apocalyptic. I don't know if you've seen the video and the images I've been watching on YouTube. I mean, the destruction is unbelievable. Now, people have accused the country's leaders of negligence and corruption, so there's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of anger that's going on there, but we know that the government rests upon Jesus' shoulders and Tom yes. and Tom, one thing I'm just really believing for is that God's kingdom will come, God's will will be done, and the kingdom that he wants, the government that he wants will be established in Lebanon. And you know, speaking of the kingdom, the Christian humanitarian organization, Samaritan's Purse, sent emergent relief to Beirut. A team filled a plane to bring thousands of hygiene kits, solar lights, and emergency shelter material. You know, even in the midst of things that are happening in the darkness, Tom, you know, Jesus is still being lifted high, and we're seeing the Praise church be mobilized and move out like never. Before. Praise God. I love the fact that the Samaritan's Purse and other organizations like that have such a tremendous impact and instantly can be there around the world. And, uh, you know, Sydney and Tom, when we look at the headlines like today, like what Sydney just shared, it seems that we're living in the pages of the book of Revelation and we need to understand the signs of the times. And our next guest is a senior pastor of Faith Bible Church in Edmond, Oklahoma and the author of the book, Coronavirus, Plagues, Pandemics, and the Coming Apocalypse, Dr. March Hitchcock. Welcome to Hope Today. It's great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Well, let me, let me ask you, before we, we get on to the coronavirus question, 
What do you think of the situation in Beirut in light of biblical prophecy? You know, the Middle East has always been a focus whenever we talk about biblical prophecy. Anything about what's happening there that kind of speaks to you? Well, you know, the Middle East and Bible prophecy, of course, is the major flashpoint, especially in the nation of Israel, um, which has been a modern nation since 1948. Um, obviously, 6% uh, of the Jews in the world were there in 1948. Now over 40% of the Jews in the world live in Israel. So the Middle East really is the, the, the flashpoint for Bible prophecy. What we see happen over there in, in Lebanon, I mean, obviously, it's a terrible humanitarian crisis. And we need to be praying for, for the people who have been affected there. Yeah. Um, you know, it kind of reminded me of Luke 21, verse 26, when Jesus said, men's hearts failed him from fear for the expectation of the things that are coming upon the world. I don't see this as a fulfillment of any prophecy. To me, it's just part of the further stage setting. Um, you know, God is getting the stage of this world set for the things he's going to do in the future. And with what's happening there in, in Lebanon, of course, Hezbollah, which is a terrorist mm -hmm. organization sponsored by Iran, uh, they're deeply embedded in, in uh, Lebanon. And so... You know, this could be an opportunity for them to, to assume more power there. We really don't know all the ramifications of this or how it will play out. It's not the fulfillment of a prophecy, though, but it is part of God setting the stage of what's going to happen in the future. We keep a lot of stage setting. Right. Well, let, let me ask you about the coronavirus. Now, we've, we've certainly heard so much from every angle about COVID-19 and the situation that we are all going through, a situation that none of us have ever been through like this. Do you feel that this is something that is prophesied in scripture, the coronavirus? You know, pestilence seems to be in uh, the book of Revelation as, as one of the, the signs of the end times. Is this something in your view, do you see this in scripture? Well, my understanding is, you know, in Matthew 24, Jesus prophesied the signs of his coming. He said there'd be, there would be earthquakes, there'd be famines, and there'd be pestilence or plagues in various places. I'm over in the book of Revelation in chapter 6, verses uh, 6 through 8. It talks about uh, plagues that are going to come along with other things and destroy a fourth of the people on the earth. And it's a sobering prophecy. But I, my understanding is, I, I think the next event on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture. And when God's going to come and catch away his church to heaven. And then I think these signs Jesus mentioned, like in Matthew 24, he's mentioned in Revelation 6, will happen after that, during the time of what we call the tribulation. So I don't see coronavirus today as the fulfillment of those prophecies, but I see it as kind of a foreshock or a foreshadow of what's coming, and uh, certainly a sobering wake up call for our world today. So I don't see it as a fulfillment of these prophecies, but it kind of foreshadow a foreshock. Uh, of what's coming. And it is interesting, too, that uh, the Bible talks about uh, diseases and the wild beasts of the earth. And all these diseases nowadays, these new diseases are all coming from animals. They're called crossover disease or zoonotic diseases. And uh, it's interesting, 30 new diseases have popped up, infectious diseases in the last 30 years. And 75% uh, of them come from animals. And so that seems to fit with what Revelation chapter 6 is saying about the connection with legs and the wild beasts of the earth. So this clearly is a foreshadow of what's coming, even though it's a faint. Well, you uh, mentioned uh, the rapture of the, the, the church, or the catching up of believers as being the next prophetic event. Well, that, that leads me to the question, do you feel that we are currently living in the end times? My, my view is the end times will happen after the rapture. So I don't see us as living in the end times yet, but I believe the rapture can happen at any moment. Okay. Um, it's the next event, I think, on God's prophetic calendar. It's an event. It's uncertain when it's going to happen, but it's certain that it will happen. Um, we're clearly living in what the Bible calls the last days. This whole time between the first and second coming of Jesus is called the last days. But we're probably living in the last days of the last days. And someday the rapture will occur, I believe, and then the end times will to unfold. Those times that will immediately see the second coming and the glorious, majestic second coming of Jesus back to earth uh, to set up his kingdom on this earth. It's going to last uh, for a thousand years. 
You know, Dr. Mark, I've heard so many people, you know, now more than ever, I'm, you know, I'm a millennial in my lifetime, I'm just seeing people share on social media and just different things about, you know, they're hearing that, you know, the end is coming, like Jesus is on his way soon. What are some things that we can do now, you know, because we know that things like these are the birth pangs and things are just going to, you know, unfortunately, I don't like to say it, but it's going to get worse. But what can we do as Christians? How can we prepare ourselves? What do we need to do, you know, before that moment, that moment that comes of the rapture? Well, that's a good question. Uh, you know, the, I love to always say God gave us Bible prophecy not to scare us, but to prepare us. And not to make us anxious, but to make us aware. And first of all, we need to be understanding the times we live in. And that's, you know, you all are having this program right now to do that. And I think that's one of the things understand what's happening around us and uh, be able to, to talk with other people personally about it. I think all of us need a sense of urgency in our lives spiritually. Uh, Jesus can come at any moment. He may come today. He may may come five years from now, he may come 10 years from now, we don't know, but he can come at any moment. And since he can come at any moment, I think it should have a sense of urgency in our evangelism and sharing with people the good news of Christ. It ought to have a sense of, of uh, urgency, I think, in how we're living our lives. Uh, the Bible says that Christ's coming is a purifying hope. It says everyone who fixes his hope on him purifies himself, even as he himself is pure. So I think we, we need to allow the coming of Jesus not to be some ominous event, something that's out there in the future that scares us, but something that is motivating us uh, to have a sense of urgency, to share this good news with gospel, but also to be living godly and pure lives. You know, we can decry the the uh, godly, the, the godlessness out there in the culture, but we need to make sure that we're living a life that's pure to God and we can do sin, but confess our sins to him, live in daily fellowship with his you know, uh, Mark, that, that is uh, so important with the, um, the situation with our, uh, our own walk with God. But there's, I'm sure, people out there listening right now that they hear about the end times and they might be skeptical or they might be fearful. But if we know Christ, we don't need to be fearful. Could you just speak to that one out there who may not know Christ and what is the step they need to take? Well, you know, there's a, there's a coronavirus that's going around right now, but I always like to say there's a, a virus that's a lot worse than the coronavirus. Everybody's infected. I mean, it's a universal virus. It's the sin virus. We have a virus of the soul. Uh, but th that, that's the bad news. The good news is Jesus, when he came, took the full force of the sin virus for us on the cross. He bore it all. And he purchased a pardon for each one of us. And if we'll simply receive what he's done for us, death and his resurrection. We can have our sins washed away, but we can receive the freedom of eternal life and be brought into a relationship with God. And people stumble over that really because it's so simple. Um, Jesus paid it all. Um, he purchased a pardon for me. And all I have to do is just simply receive it. That's the good news. It's God's grace. We don't do anything to earn it. We don't do anything to deserve it. We simply receive that um, as a free gift. So if, if there's someone out there who's never done that, who's never received that gift, um, I urge them right now to do it. It's really that simple. Just say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I need a Savior. Jesus is the Savior I need. And I trust in him and believe in him to wash away my sins. Amen to that. And if any of you out there, as, as Dr. Mark is speaking, you're saying, I need this relationship. I need to have that, uh, that surety that I am his and that I have had my sins forgiven. And no matter what happens, in the future, no matter what the, the uh, signs of the times that come to pass, I know that my salvation is secure. You can call our number at 888-665-4483 and uh, just uh, you know get a hold of a prayer partner. They wanna lead you into that salvation experience and you can also just uh, pray with them and, uh, and take your, your request and your problems to God. And it will never be the same once you open that door of your life. Dr. Mm -hmm. Mark, in the last minute that we have here, uh, I know some people have said this, and I, I'm not sure what I, I think of this, this thought, but do you feel like the coronavirus is a judgment of God on, uh, on our society? Well, you know, God has judged in the past with plagues. We know that the plagues of Egypt, the plagues of the Philistines, even plagues on his own people. Um, we know there's going to be plagues in the future that are God's judgment. In the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 6. But, you know, the Bible nowhere tells us that coronavirus or anything happening today is a specific judgment of God. So I like to always say when God's silent, we keep silent. When God speaks, we keep speak. God has not told us that. Um, I think it's better for us to, to 
refrain from saying that, but I do believe at a minimum what we're seeing today certainly is a wake-up call. And uh, we all need to allow it to wake us up uh, all closer to God at times and uh, to, to make him the Lord of our life on that. Um, so I don't think it's a judgment. Certainly, a wake up call, and we need to be, uh, allow it to do that work in our lives. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Marge Hitchcock. Uh, and uh, we just appreciate you, appreciate what you're uh, sharing with us. We'll have a link to your website as well and where people can get the book. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. God bless you. Appreciate your ministry. God bless. Well, thank you so much for uh, being with us, Dr. Mark, and we are going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Here at Cornerstone TV, we depend on your support to provide inspiring, life-changing programs. As a way of saying thank you, we want to send you Keys to Powerful Prayer by best-selling author Stormy Omardian. Receive this small pocketbook along with Chosen, a 30-day devotional for your best gift. To give, call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org. Request Keys to Powerful Prayer and reignite your prayer life today. Cornerstone Television is blessed with not one, but two dynamic broadcast ministries. That second ministry is the Faith and Family Channel, and we are blessed to have some of the most dynamic, truth-telling ministries on the planet. One of those dynamic ministries is the Rodman Street Missionary Baptist Church in East Liberty, boldly telling the truth and transforming that community, transforming this city, transforming this state, and transforming the world. Thank you, dear God. And it is my privilege to introduce Dr. Darrell and Minister Talita Kennedy, who lead this dynamic ministry. Friends, welcome to Hope Today. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. So, so nice to have Tom. you here. Thank you for having us on the show. <laughs> Talita, we know, and, and, and God has made this very clear, that this is going to be a year of healing and redemption. Yes. Yes. You have a very personal perspective on that. I do, I do. I, um, I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma in April. And um, how that came about is uh, it started out with severe back pain. Mm. Um, and I finally said to my doctor, this is more than just um, back pain, a pulled muscle. Um, there's something else going on here. And... Finally, they ran all the tests and scans and, and determined that um, I have multiple myeloma. They told me from the onset that they know doctors even and, and people that have lived decades with this type of cancer. For those of you who don't know what multiple myeloma is, it's, a, it's, it's cancer. And um, they told me that it's treatable, but not curable. But Tom, Sydney, Tom, I'm believing God for the cure. That's we right. thank God right. for earthly doctors because God gave them the knowledge that they possess. But I am acknowledging our Heavenly Father as the God who heals me. <laughs> Exodus 15 and 26, for I, where he says, I am the God who healeth thee. And so um, I'm going to him, Jehovah Rapha, the one who cures men's fixes, restores. And so, and, and I have a praise report. At my last doctor's appointment, my doctor said that I, my numbers have come down dramatically. Thank you, God. Dramatically. Thank you. Thank you. And so I'm, I'm, I'm giving him the praise all every That's step right. of the way. And, and Daryl, I know you always say this. We, we thank God in advance of the victory. In exactly. the midst of the storm is when we begin that praise. Thank you, dear God. We are praising you for this victory. 
And Daryl, you are so bold in telling that truth. What is God telling the church as he has exposed all of these small g pagan gods of this land, all of the things that we worship? What is he saying to the church now about building unity and ending racism? God has put the entire world on pause. Mm. And he has said that we need to learn some lessons. You win some and you learn some. And I've been saying that we have to learn about ourselves, about God, about our relationship with God, about our priorities and our relationship with others. Thank you. And many times the church has been quiet on racism. Racism is COVID-16-19 in America. It didn't just happen in COVID-19, but 16-19. And what we need to understand is that God has put us all together and we can't be so in love with God and not love our brothers and sisters who we see every day and a God that we have never seen before. There are a few things that I want to say to help us as Christians. We can no longer afford to ignore the pain and suffering caused by systemic racism, particularly anti-blackness, the murders of Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and George Floyd, and the recent protests have made this abundantly clear. So what do I do as a white Christian? I'm glad you asked. First of all, you need to listen. You need to hear the voices of those of us who are going through. We don't have the opportunity to be uh, white one day, black another day, or Asian another day. We are who we are every day. So you can learn something by listening. But also, look at your library. What are you reading? Are you reading any materials from minority writers to see what they are saying? And not just uh, the, the regular theologians who talk about it from a different perspective. Third, what are you doing about it? It's good for you to say that you are not racist, but what about the institutional racism that's going on? What are you doing to try to help to bridge the gap? And those are the things that I think that we need to look at but also, very shortly, the media is going to go to something else, but I don't have that opportunity to change my clothes. I will always be an African-American. And I think that you can help me by coming alongside and learning from me to hear my story, my pain, and see how we can work together. Praise God. My friend, thank you. Thank you for saying what needs to be said. Thank you for sharing that fresh word. Thank you for being a part of the Faith and Family Channel. Thank you for helping us to lead by example. Praise God. Thanks to both of you for the boldness with which you are telling that truth. May God richly bless you. Well, we will be praying for this and all of the prayer requests for today. Please stay tuned for more of Hope Today. On tomorrow's Hope Today, love like you mean it. Family Life Radio host and author Bob Lapine shares how you can have the heart of a marriage that honors God. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Well, we'll be praying for your request in just a moment, but I, I don't want to leave that interview without uh, saying, Tom, how much uh, that was uh, powerful yes. and affected yes. me and what uh, the practical Praise points. God. I love that, Tom and Sydney, about the practical points that he gave for anybody who's white that is yeah, in that, uh, uh, facing what, what, the, what do we do? We can say we're not racist, but what do we do? That's right. We have, a, we have a responsibility and it goes beyond ourselves. And, and, and he just articulated that so very well. Always does, always does. That, that, that ministry just so boldly tells that truth and praise be to God for that because we are accountable. There's a, a wonderful passage in, in Colossians and, and Paul wrote to the church in Coloss and he said to them, we no longer designate or, or categorize ourselves as Gentile or Jew, as slave or free, as barbarian or Scythian, as circumcised or uncircumcised. Christ is in us all and we are all one in Christ. 
You know, we are all one in Christ, and I think what is even happening, just as Tom, as you've been saying this year so eloquently, is that God is exposing all the small gods, and the one thing that church, that we have to expose, we gotta get rid of, is racism. We have to just know we are one, but we have to realize that there are things that have been right. set up. There's things that, you know, we read or different things. We all come from different vantage points. And it reminds me of something that I remember when we did our Race and Reconciliation Program, and I had an opportunity to talk to Will Ford, and it was so powerful. He said, it's time for us to stay in the room. If everybody's mm. around you looks the same, thinks the same, you're not going to grow. And that's not what God is calling us to do in no. this season. So I just encourage you, if you have people in your circle, in your sphere of influence that all look like you, all think like you, I understand how it can be because we're really comfortable, but this is the time that we sit across and like, let me hear what you have to say. Right. Because if we truly, truly want to look like the body of Christ, then we have to really take a step out of faith and be obedient to that because it's getting to the point where I feel, you know, one thing that my husband and I, you know, I'm in a blended relate like a relationship is that one thing is this I feel this is church is like I for me personally I will not go to an all white church and I will not go to all black. I won't because it's not what the kingdom is supposed to look like. No, and so I just encourage you, I know in some of our neighborhoods, that's what it looks like, but just step out. If you're a pastor, connect with a pastor that looks different to you. Now is the time. If we're expecting the world to move, we see how they're moving, but God is calling us right now, body of Christ, right now to be the ecclesia, for his kingdom to come, for his will to be done. Look in Revelation for every nation, tribe, and tongue to come together. Let's model it for us here Amen. on earth. Mm, say it, little sister. No, that's really good, <laughs> really good, Sydney. Uh, we, you know, we, we had talked earlier about salvation and about the, the need for salvation. And I'm just delighted to report that uh, Jimmy has called in for Thank first time salvation and Kurt to rededicate his life to the Lord. Praise Thank God. You. That is so Thank wonderful. You. Cindy, will you lead us in prayer for the prayer requests? Heavenly gracious Father, we just thank you so much for our brothers and our sisters, Father God, that have called in, Father God, that are watching right now. And Lord Jesus, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would descend, that you would go right into their living room, right into their bedroom, wherever they're watching right now, and you would touch them, that you would speak to them, that you would heal them, that you would deliver them, Father God. And Lord Jesus, I pray that you would even empower them, Jesus, to step outside of their comfort zones and go into their neighborhoods and spread the good news of Jesus, because yes. Jesus, we need you now more than ever ever before. So we thank you and we praise you that you are calling us to be the hope because you are the hope of glory. In Jesus' name, mm. amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Uh, I just feel like this word is for somebody out there. You're the hero that is going to change somebody's life today. Mm. We talk a lot about our needs, but you are the hero that's going to change somebody's life today. Sydney, Tom, great program. Thank, thank you so much for thank being you. here. Thank, you, thank our guests for being here. You know, not only the hero, you're going to have this new sense of peace and sense of God's hope in your life because we're believing that you're going to find God's hope today. Have a wonderful day in the Lord.